Most people in this world are naive, like I was when I entered the work world. Most people don't understand the 48 laws of power. They don't understand that you want to talk less to appear more powerful. They don't understand the dynamic of making people come to you instead of always kind of foisting yourself on others, etc. And that naivete is what gets you into a lot of trouble in life, right? It used to be only white men of a certain age and a certain ba social background who had access to this kind of knowledge, who could have that kind of power. And it kind of pissed me off that, that it was like this secret that nobody wanted to share. I wanted to open up, I wanted to get, end all the hypocrisy. I wanted everybody to see that this is how things operate behind closed doors, etc. People who have it easy in life never have to work on themselves, right? But people who have the worst circumstances in them, they're either crushed by it or they use it to develop themselves. But you cannot get ahead in this world as a social animal dependent on other people in every aspect of life unless you treat that as another skill as well. So yes, the process of looking inward is absolutely essential, but you cannot disconnect yourself from your teachers, your mentors, your colleagues. You could have all the skill in the world and know your life's task brilliantly, but if you continually alienate people by your boorish behavior, by your insensitivity, all of the skill level in the world will be completely neutralized by your own mistakes. Well, it's never too late. It's better to start earlier on in life. I mean, I wrote a book, Mastery, that deals with that subject. The earlier you figure it out, the better off you are, but it can happen later in life. Now, I figured out at an early age that I wanted to write. I didn't know what I wanted to write, but I loved words and I loved writing. And if I didn't have that connection when I was eight years old, all the way into high school and college, I would have been a lost soul. And I empathize with a lot of people who don't have that feeling when they're eight or 18 or in their 20s. But I try to tell people everybody has it. You're just not listening to yourself. You've lost touch with who you are, the core of your being. You're on social media too much. You're listening to what other people are telling you. You're listening to what your parents told you you should be doing in life. You're listening to what your friends think is cool. You're listening to what the culture is all about, you know, the entertainment industry, etc. You gotta cut all that shit out. You gotta listen to yourself. And you gotta be a bit bold. And you have to embrace what makes you different. I say what makes you weird because I know personally I'm a very weird person. I don't mind being weird. I use it to my advantage. I put it in my books. Law number one, never outshine the master. I could, I could sit here and cry and tell you all kinds of tragic stories about how I outshone the master and how miserable it made me, right? So I was one of those people who was a bit naive and didn't understand this kind of secret language that power, that people in power have. Negative emotions are trying to teach you something. They're trying to teach you the opposite. Something else is going on. Frustration, if I was simply what would be worse than frustration would be despair, giving up, no hope. But frustration is a sign that you haven't given up. You're, you know you can do something, but you haven't figured it out. So when you have those kind of feelings, look at them and there's something positive in that. How can you ever change yourself? You think that you're a Gandhi, but how can you be, be a Gandhi if you won't like look at yourself and change yourself, right? The only way you can become good or, or kind of overcome some of these qualities is by looking at it, seeing the reality, and then confronting it, and then trying to change it. You have weirdness to you, whoever you are. Things that you might sometimes be a little bit ashamed or embarrassed or uncomfortable with, right? But you shouldn't be. What makes you different, what makes you particularly strange, if you want to use another word, is your strength, is your source of power. You've lost touch with it. Let's go back and try and find it. And that's the, that's, the, that's the whole problem here. How do you find it? Well, it's a process. You have to be patient. It's not going to come like a light bulb in your head. Ah, I was meant to do this. I was meant to write the 48 Laws of Power. That's not how it works. It takes time. To do anything in life takes time and hours and patience and work. I recommend oh, starting a journal and such and writing down some of the things that I think are important to you. So I like to tell people to go back to their earliest childhood memories of things that really excited them before they got mixed up with parents and teachers and all that other people telling them stuff, you know? Like for me, it was words and language. I just was entranced 
by the sound of language itself, right? It's like music to me. You had something like that. There's a book I recommend. It's a bit technical, but it's a brilliant book called The Five Frames of Mind by Howard Gardner. The point of this book is that there are five forms of intelligence. We normally associate intelligence with intellectuals, with our Noam Chomsky, with Albert Einstein. And he says, no, intelligence comes in all forms. Working with your hands is a form of intelligence. A carpenter has a high form of intelligence. People who are sports, who are athletic, who use their body, that's another form of intelligence. There's music, there's math, there's language. You have one of these frames of mind by the way your brain is wired, you, have, you are inclined towards one of them. Figure that out. If you are somebody who's word-oriented and you end up going into a field that's about math or about numbers, you're in for a lot of pain in life, right? So you've got to figure that kind of, what I call primal connection to some kind of field. You have to look at the things that you love and the things that you hate. You're looking at things that are very powerful inside of you that are emotional, they're not intellectual, they're thoughts, they're, I'm sorry, they're feelings, they're emotions, they're visceral things that you connect to. I know you do, and I am completely egalitarian. I believe everybody has that. When I wrote the book Mastery, to prove my point that everyone has it, I interviewed contemporary masters, and one of them is the woman Temple Grandin, who was born with high-level autism, right? She was gonna be hospitalized for her entire life. When she was two or three years old, she had the good luck of finding the right teacher who brought her out of her shell. And she eventually became a, a very um, respected professor of animal research, right? She's absolutely brilliant. And she also studies autism itself. If somebody with that kind of disability, that kind of thing, you know, everything stacked against her, if she can reach, she can figure it out and reach mastery, then I certainly believe everybody has that potential. But I know it doesn't come easy. It's a process and you have to be patient, but you have to put in the work. So the mastery is about your high level of skill, right? And to do that, you have to go through an apprenticeship. You have to learn things over and over and over again. And I truly believe that fulfilling your career ambitions is going to lead to, to a high sense of fulfillment in your life.